What up guys? Today's chapter 17, day 17 of the Proverbs Challenge 31 chapters in 31 days. And I got to thinking yesterday about what we were talking about. The Lord always will direct our steps. And I realized these videos, God has been directing me through this this whole time. When I first started, these videos, I kept thinking, what am I going to say? Like, what if I just read it and I have nothing to say? What do I do? But God has always provided something for me to say and then something to do. And I keep asking him that he speaks through me with them. So, and then for you guys. So, and he's been always providing. He's always, and he even provided more thoughts and ideas for me to do after the Proverbs Challenge for other videos to do. So, I'm grateful for that. So, he's always directing our steps, guys, if we continue to dwell within him and ask him for that direction. So, today is chapter 17. Again, contrast the upright and the wicked. There's some good stuff in here, so bear with me. Here we go. Better is a dry morsel and quietness with it than a house full of feasting with strife. A servant who acts wisely will rule over a son who acts shamefully and will share in the inheritance among brothers. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests hearts. An evildoer listens to wicked lips. A liar pays attention to a destructive tongue. He who mocks the poor taunts his maker. He who rejoices at calamity will not go unpunished. Grandchildren are the crown of old men, and the glory of his sons is their fathers. Excellent speech is not fitting for a fool, much less are lying lips to a prince. A bribe is a charm in the sight of its owner. Whoever it turn, wherever it turns, he prospers. He who conceals a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates intimate friends. A rebuke goes deeper into one who has understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. A rebellious man seeks only evil, so a cruel messenger will be sent against him. Let a man meet a bear robbed of her cubs, rather than a fool in his folly. He who returns evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is like letting out water, so abandon the quarrel before it breaks out. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous, both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. Why is there a price in the hand of a fool to buy wisdom when he has no sense? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born of, for adversity. A man lacking in sense pledges and becomes guarantor in the presence of his neighbor. He who loves transgression loves strife. He who raises his door seeks destruction. He who has a crooked mind finds no good, and he who is perverted in his language falls into evil. He who sires a fool does so to his sorrow, and the father of a fool has no joy. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. A wicked man receives a bribe from the bosom to per, uh, per, pervert the ways of justice. Wisdom is in the presence of the one who is understanding, but the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to, who, to her who bore him. It is also not good to find the righteous, nor to strike the noble for their uprightness. He who restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. When he closes his lips, his, he is considered prudent. So there's actually a lot of verses here that <laughs> come out to me, but two of them that I want to talk about is verse 12, which is, Let a man meet a bear robbed of her cubs rather than a fool in his folly. And that's pretty harsh. Like, yeah, I always think about... That just reminds me of when people say, don't ever get between a bear and her cubs, because that's not a good thing. And this says, you know, let a man meet a bear robbed of her cubs. Like, I can't imagine that, rather than a fool in his folly. They're saying it's better to meet a bear and cubs than rather than a fool in his folly. And the Bible talks a lot about fools, and one of the scriptures that, that comes to mind is, a fool says there is no God. And if you don't believe in God, I know there's a lot of people out there who don't believe in God, like, that that they'll do good things, but if they don't believe in God, if there's something they want to do, lie, cheat, steal, whatever, if they think that they can get away with it, would they not do it? So something to think about. So, so you never know what a fool will do. And then the second one is verse 22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. And I see that as, you know, you got a broken spirit. It, it's just tough, man. It just drags you down, just zaps all your energy out of you but a joyful heart is good medicine so for one it's almost like we have to have the joyful heart and it's good for our souls but when we have that joyful heart we should use that for others as well to lift their spirits up because that is it's better than any kind of medicine you can ever take and it comes from god you know god and, and when we seek god and ask him for his joy and his peace and his comfort 
he'll give it to us and then we can give it to those who need it. So think about that guys, that's all I got for you today. Um, tomorrow is chapter 18, looking forward to it and I love you guys, I uh, love doing these so hopefully the spirit continues to encourage you and inspire you guys to uh, get into the word as well and act it out and, and apply what you're learning. All right, I love you guys, peace, I'm out.